Mihito Maki, a young boy, awakens in 1943 during the Pacific War, feeling a sense of urgency as he dashed towards the hospital engulfed in flames. People flee their homes while Mihito desperately calls Ev for his mother, Hisako, who is trapped within the blazing inferno. Tragically, despite his efforts, Hisako succumbs to the flames, leaving Mihito grief-stricken, with his world shattered. Mihito embarks on a journey away from Tokyo alongside his father Shuichi, who oversees an arsenal. Supporting the war effort, Shuichi eventually remarries Hisako's sister, Natsuko, who is carrying their child. Accompanied by Mihito, they arrive at Natsuko's estate, a sprawling property inhabited by seven elderly maids. Along the way, Mihito and Natsuko catch sight of a graceful gray heron in flight, a creature indigenous to the area. Intrigued, Mihito endeavors to capture the elusive bird, following its path with determination, but ultimately failing to ensnare it. During his pursuit, he stumbles upon a tower nestled within the estate grounds, where he discovers remnants of the Huron's wings, a mysterious find that sparks his curiosity. Upon being discovered by the maids, Mihito is escorted back home, where Natsuko divulges the tower's history, revealing its connection to her eccentric granduncle who delved into the pursuit of otherworldly realms. Despite Mihito's attempts to integrate into his new surroundings by attending school, he finds himself subjected to ridicule and bullying by his peers. Frustrated and overwhelmed, he resorts to self-harm, inflicting a deep wound upon himself, which he conceals by fabricating a fall. Concerned for his well-being, Shoichi intervenes, urging the school to address the matter. Night after night, Mihito is plagued by harrowing nightmares of his mother's fiery demise. The haunting visions torment his sleep. In a twist of fate, he crosses paths once again with the enigmatic heron, prompting a confrontation in which he confronts the bird, demanding answers to its cryptic presence. Heron states that Mado's presence is requested because he can escort him to his mother. At that moment, a group of frogs begins to cover Mahito's body, but the maids and Natsuko rush towards them and shoot arrows, which startle the frogs, consequently, Mahito falls unconscious. Upon regaining consciousness, Shuichi informs him that he has withdrawn Mihito from school after making a donation, however Natsuko was in poor health, so Mado goes to meet her. Subsequently, he encounters Heron again, who beckons him, but this time before approaching Heron, Mado crafts an arrow for himself. Interestingly, while crafting the arrow, he utilizes the wings of the same Heron. During this process, Mihito observes Natsuko heading towards the tower, but he didn't pay attention to that. Later, the maids embark on a search for Natsuko, who has been vanished, about which a maid informs Mihito, and he ventures to the tower in search of Heron, reluctantly, she too accompanies him. Along the way, she implores him to reconsider, fearing it might be a trap. Nonetheless, Mihito disregards her advice. Upon locating Heron, Heron leads him to the tower, where Mihito encounters an apparition of Hisako lying on a sofa. When Mihito attempts to touch her, she dissolves, revealing it to be an illusion. Enraged by this, Mihito shoots an arrow at Heron. Due to Heron's wings, the arrow autonomously pursues Heron until it embeds itself in Heron's beak, causing a hole in his beak. After the arrow enters his beak, the Heron undergoes a transformation, taking on the form of a small, fat, and bald man. Then Mihito assists him in removing the arrow from his beak and requests his guidance to find her aunt. However, he admits to not knowing Natsuko's whereabouts. Suddenly, a glass rose descends from above, and the tower master, standing atop, reminds the heron that he had commanded him to become Mahito's guide. Following this reminder, the heron accompanies Mahito and the maid to the lower floor. Upon arrival, Mahito finds himself on an island in another world, where he encounters a group of hungry pelicans intent on devouring him. Meanwhile, the gates of the graveyard open, pushing him forward. It is then that a sailor woman named Kuriko spots him and shoos the pelicans away. Upon noticing the Huron's feather on his arrow, she realizes that the pelicans couldn't harm Mahito because of the Huron's feather. Mahito joins Kuriko as she boards her boat and heads home. During the journey, Kuriko explains the existence of phantoms in this world. Subsequently, she catches a very large fish, and upon reaching her house, she tends to Varavara, a small marshmallow-like entity, nurturing it in preparation for its birth beyond the world of the. So, Mihito lends a hand as Kuriko prepares to cut the large fish. Later, Mihito rests, and upon waking, he finds himself surrounded by dolls, resembling the maids who cared for him in his real house. He deduces that Kuriko is indeed the same maid who accompanied him to the spirit world. 
According to Kuriko, these dolls serve as protectors for Mahito. At night, Mahito heads to the washroom, where he notices the gentle moonlight illuminating the room. There he and Kuriko catch sight of Vara Vara ascending. Just as they mature to embark on a new journey in another world, they gracefully fly away, but they are swiftly pursued by pelicans eager to consume them. However, a young lady named intervenes and prevents the pelicans from harming them. Following this unexpected encounter, Mahito encounters the leader of the noble pelicans behind the house, who explains the dire circumstances they face in this world. Trapped on the island, the pelicans have no alternative but to feed on Vora Vora for sustenance. As their lives have been irrevocably altered, their offspring have even forgotten how to fly. Despite their efforts to soar to great heights, they could never get out with a heavy heart, the noble pelican passes away, leaving Mahito to dig a grave for the fallen bird. Later the heron locates Mahito, who is in the midst of this solemn task. Before parting ways, they share a final meal together at Kuriko's place. Expressing their gratitude, Mahito and the heron bid farewell to Kuriko and prepare to depart. As they make their exit, Kuriko presents Mahito with a miniature doll as a token of good luck. Meanwhile, in the real world, Shuichi frets over the disappearance of Mahito, Natsuko, and Kuriko. Despite their exhaustive search efforts, they fail to locate anyone. During this time, one of the maids informs Shuichi about a historical event wherein a meteorite collided with the area years ago, causing widespread devastation. Initially, fear gripped the community. But after three decades, Shuichi's granduncle constructed a tower around the same meteorite. However, the tower's construction was plagued by unfortunate incidents. Moreover, Asako mysteriously vanished for a year following the tower's completion before inexplicably returning. Meanwhile, Mahito and Heron move ahead together, where Mahito aids in fixing the hole in Heron's beak, which was hindering his ability to fly naturally. Once the hole is patched, Heron transforms back and they continue their journey. Upon reaching a blacksmith's house in search of Natsuko, they encounter numerous giant parakeets, who were to brought their similar to the pelicans. Heron distracts the parakeets while Mahito rushes towards the house, however they get separated again. Inside the house, Mahito is confronted by more giant parakeets, claiming they will lead him to Natsuko. But with sinister intentions, fortunately Himi reappears, wielding her firepower to scare off the parakeets, and rescues Mahito. There Mahito confides in Himi about his predicament, only to discover that Natsuko is her sister. Himi guides Mahito to her house and reveals that her granduncle, the Tower Master, has created pathways between this world and others, hence the existence of similar towers near Mahito's house and... Here, escaping the parakeets, Himi leads Mahito to a place with many doors, one of which could lead back to his world. There Mahito finds Shuichi and his mates, who were searching for him and Natsuko. As Shuichi attempts to open the door, the parakeets intervene, pushing him away. Shuichi retaliates, but as soon as the parakeets enters this world, they transform into their real, smaller forms. Mahito, determined to remain an aid in the search for Natsuko, decides not to return to his own world. Himi guides him to a delivery room where Natsuko was present, and despite her initial refusal, Mahito persists in persuading her to come home. However, as he persists, the energy in the room reacts unexpectedly, causing bandages to ensnare both Mahito and Natsuko. Initially furious, Natsuko's anger gets softened when Mahito accidentally refers to her as mother instead. In the ensuing moment, the room's energy forcefully ejects Mahito toward Himi, leaving them stunned. Himi swiftly tends to his injuries, and requests permission from the grand uncle to depart. Overwhelmed, Mahito and Himi succumb to unconsciousness. In a surreal dream, Mahito encounters the wizard, Natsuko's grand uncle, who presents a stack of stone toad blocks symbolizing different dimensions. He leads Mahito to a stone representing the creation and power of their world. The wizard offers him the role of successor, emphasizing their blood relation. Despite the wizard's assurance of purity, Mahito senses malevolence within the stones. Nonetheless, the wizard entrusts Mahito, believing in his capacity to create a world devoid of horrors. Abruptly, the dream ends, and Mahito awakens to find himself ensnared by parakeets. Amidst the chaos, Heron intervenes, dispatching some of the parakeets and freeing Mahito. United Mahito and Heron embark on a mission to liberate Himi from the clutches of the parakeets. Meanwhile, the parakeet king seizes Himi and parades her before the cheering crowd. Showered with flowers, the parakeet king, in collaboration with Grand Uncle, sought to maintain order in the world through his army. 
Heron informs Mahito that the Parakeet King intends to strike a deal with the wizard through Himi. The king aims to seize control of a tower, and Mahito's intrusion provides a perfect pretext for him. Heron and Mahito stealthily trail the king within the kingdom, but he notices them approaching from behind. Upon seeing them, he swiftly cuts off their path with his sword. Later, the king confronts the wizard, alleging that Mahito's intrusion into the delivery room was unacceptable. He insists that Mahito must face consequences for his actions. The wizard then reveals his desire for Mahito to become his successor. Afterward, the parakeet king departs, leaving Himi in the care of the wizard. When Himi regains consciousness, she embraces the wizard warmly. Meanwhile, Heron and Mahito emerge from the swamp and enter a passage, where the king parakeet was also trailing them. Eventually, Himi and Mahito reunite, with Himi expressing joy at Mahito's return. She discloses that the wizard is awaiting Mahito's presence, as he has gathered 13 stones from various dimensions and timelines to maintain peace. However, Mahito is hesitant to accept the role of Grand Uncle's successor, as he believes the wounds inflicted upon him indicate he is not free from evil. He expresses a desire to return to his world, where he can forge friendships with individuals like Himi, Kuriko, and Heron. Unbeknownst to them, the Parakeet King overhears their conversation and becomes infuriated. In his anger, he crushes Heron and advances toward Mahito. Initially intending to seize control of the tower, he clumsily stacks Grand Uncle's blocks incorrectly. As they teeter on the brink of collapse, he hastily slices through them with his sword, sub-blocks and held the stone and the tower together. And when the stone get destroyed, the tower collapsed causing the whole world to begin crumbling and falling apart, and Grand Uncle instructs his descendants to return to their world for the final time. After imparting this message, he vanishes into a void, leaving Himi in tears as she thanks him. Everyone hurries away from the door, including Natsuko and Kuriko, who had just arrived. Mihito tries to take Himi to the door, but she refuses, and explains that she is younger, and would eventually become his mother. She expresses pride in Mahito becoming her son. After that she bids farewell to him and Natsuko, and return to her door with Kuriko. At the moment the tower collapses, Mahito, Natsuko, Heron, and a group of parakeets emerge from the door. Finally, the pelicans also manages to escape. Heron asked Mahito if he remembered their previous location, and Mahito recalls everything. Heron remarks that this was unusual, as people often forget such things. Heron explains that Mahito would eventually forget about the other world and bid him farewell as a friend. Heron then transforms into his true form and flew away. Later, Kuriko reappears from Mahito's pocket, as her younger self had given Mahito a doll resembling her. Returning to Tokyo with Suichi, Natsuko, and his younger brother. And with this, the story comes to an end.